Jerry Henry from Sandell Avionics. Let's talk a little bit about this new product, the ST3400H. Well, it was a long time in the making. Uh, Sandell has uh, been the leader in TAWS retrofit products for many years in the fixed wing market. But we had to start with a clean slate because of the hugely specialized requirements of helicopters flying so close to the ground that it had to be a whole new technology. And the one thing we've accomplished is absolutely nuisance-free alerting, which is a huge consideration since other products are put out nuisance alerts, false alerts, and really just interrupt the pilot more than they do anything. The closer you get to the ground, the terrain could become completely red. They could be warning, 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 and the pilot reaches over and shuts it off. Well, an HTAWS system that's shut off to us is more dangerous than one that's on and being trusted. So we're giving the pilot a lot of unique options where he can go into a low sensitivity mode and minimize the alerts and then go into a low sensitivity off airport, which is extremely important for HEMS operators that absolutely have to land in obscure places off airport to pick up a crash victim and successfully navigate their way out of a tight situation. And that's exactly what this unit will do. You can go down, land, pick up your passenger, depart, and have no alerts unless you purposely aim toward terrain or an obstacle. So this is key. The, the pilot's going to immediately learn to trust the, the unit and depend on it. The unit gives the pilot kind of a much closer view of the terrain than he might get in some other product. That's exactly true. And it's because of the high definition of our display and the technology of the terrain data that we load into this. It's defined as three arc second data, which is a 300 by 300 foot square. Other products are working with six arc second data, and if you draw the square out, it's four times higher resolution on the Sandell product than any other. So we will allow a pilot to scroll down to as small as a half a mile scale on the map and still have completely viable and trustable uh, terrain data. No other product can do that. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. What was the design process like from start to finish on this product? Well, we thought at first we might be able to use the existing hardware from our fixed wing TAWS and put a very exotic software load into it. But we found out early on that it was going to take a lot more processing power to accommodate the three arc second data, increased definition on obstacles because of the altitudes the helicopters fly at, which is very low. And then we had to incorporate this technology to avoid the nuisance alerts. So the previous hardware just would not accommodate all that. So this is a clean slate redesign. As far as how we packaged it, it's always been Sandell's philosophy to make it easy to install. So we allowed it and built the interfaces into the unit so that it could replace virtually any radar altimeter indicator known, all the way up into military radar altimeters. Now this satisfied another requirement, and that is per TSOC-194, the display for helicopter TAWS has to be in the primary field of view of the pilot. It's a very important point. By replacing a radar altimeter indicator and sliding our unit in, it assured us that position. Talk to us a little bit about the um, EMS notice proposed rulemaking and how that kind of drove what it was that you did bringing this to market. Well, it wasn't designed for one application, although uh, we had a feeling from talk amongst the FAA and the NTSB that HEMS would be the first targeted. So when the NPRM was published, it was pretty clear that that's the direction they were going, that uh, radar altimeters and HTAWs would be mandated. Now, since we replaced the radar altimeter indicator, it made it real simple. It's like we kind of had a premonition that that was going to be needed. So even if a ship doesn't have a rat out in it, we can save them a tremendous amount of money by not having to buy that manufacturer's radar altimeter indicator.
we are the indicator. We went one step further and since we know that we will be installed in Part 27 and Part 29 helicopters, we included the six modes of GPWS, which really does classify us as a Class A TAWS. And all of this at one price. And there's no upcharge for the Class A. What are some of the other features of the unit? Well, I think its most redeeming feature is its display quality. One of the challenges we've had is we can't even print literature that represents the display as well as the display does itself. There's no restriction on the viewing angle. You can put it anywhere in the cockpit and it can be seen by anybody in the cockpit. But since it has to be in the primary field of view of the pilot, it does remain very visible to the co-pilot if there was a two-pilot helicopter. We can also act as the primary display for any traffic system built. What you net out of this is radar altimeter, terrain avoidance, obstacle avoidance, and traffic avoidance at one glance. Freedom through innovation. It's what led us to develop Cirrus Flying 2.0, the framework for a bold new take on private aviation. And as a result, the gap between the aircraft we produce and those of our competitors continues to widen. Cirrus knows where the personal aircraft industry is headed. We're already there. What kind of install base do you have so far? Most recently, North Memorial Hospital chose us for their fleet of Augusta 109s. And they are, have two ships flying and a third of a fleet being installed right now. We've gone into a Sikorsky S-76. This is a, obviously a much larger helicopter in New Zealand, so we have international installations in process. The oil and gas refinery and uh, exploration companies are extremely interested. Uh, Metro Aviation has a huge fleet of helicopters. They will be testing our unit for implementation very soon. In fact, they have units on in stock, ready to go. And really, it's numerous and broad. Uh, I think once we get the Part 29 STC, we'll see even more attention in the bigger helicopters. Is it a universal STC, or does it have to be approved for each individual helicopter? Well, that was one of the things that the Rotorcraft Directorate out of Fort Worth assured us, is that field approvals would be allowed off of our existing STC. And this has been proven already in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area with North Memorial Hospital. It was, uh, it was a breeze. They slid them in, got them field approved, and everything's fine. If this follows suit across the United States, it'd be a great thing for everybody.